Welcome to Don't Fear 5 Axis Part 3, Rotary Installation and Setup. In this episode, we'll show you some features in the Haas Control that make installing a two-axis rotary product on a three-axis Haas mill easy and convenient. Before we go any further, let's talk about the old way. We used to have to manually pick up the center of the rotary platter. Then we'd have to tilt the rotary axis up and pick up the face at 90 degrees and then pick it up again at minus 90 degrees and perform a manual calculation to find the center. Then we'd set the tool length offsets off of the platter or some surface of the fixture and the z-axis work offset was the distance from that point to the center of rotation. But we're still not done. We have to go to the computer system and move the geometry to the exact same location in the computer as it is in the machine and post our code. Then, if anything moves, we've got to go back to the computer, move the geometry again, and repost. And if I need to make any small adjustments after I've cut apart, guess what? Back to the computer system, repost code, back to the machine, run another part. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the steps needed to machine a part both with and without DWO and TCPC. I've modeled my part in my CAM software with my X, Y, and Z axis coordinates located here on top of my part. Now, if I were to load this program in my machine, my part would be machined here, basically inside of the rotary fixture plate. That's not going to work. I need my part to be held in a vise. When I modeled this part, I didn't know how tall or where my vise would be. Now my coordinates are easily five inches higher in Z. And don't forget, the fixture plate needs to rotate in order to machine the features on the side of my part. Once my rotary moved 90 degrees, this changes everything. Now my X, Y, and Z coordinates are in a completely different position compared to my original cam part. I definitely need to go back to my CAM program and rethink this. But with DWO and TCPC, I simply add a G254 and the control automatically offsets the program for me in machine space. Regardless of how many rotary moves or what angles, my part will always be machined correctly. Now let's look at this animation a little closer. I'm using the same CAD file on both the right and left sides of the screen. The only difference is, on the right, DWO and TCPC has done all the work for me, locating my part correctly. This way, I don't care about the work holding. There's no need to run back and forth to my CAD system. With DWO and TCPC, I simply program my part once, and I'm always good to go. Now, let me show you a better way of setting up a two-axis rotary on a mill. My example today, we're going to use a TRT100 in the DM1. First, I'm going to go to the Features page. You're going to need to have these four features enabled, 4th and 5th axis, high-speed machining, and the dynamic work offset and tool center point control options. Note, this page shows you if there's a tryout available and how much time is left. Before we can use the dynamic work offset and tool center point control feature we just talked about, we need to know where the rotary is inside the X, Y, and Z coordinate system. This is known as the Machine Rotary Zero Point, or MRZP. The mill's three linear axes move like this, X, Y, and Z. A rotary axis mounted here will rotate about the X axis. This is an A axis. A rotary mounted here rotates about the Y axis, so this is a B axis and a rotary mounted here will rotate about the Z axis. This is a C axis. Get it? X, Y, Z, A, B, C. A about X, B about Y, and C about Z. The machine rotary zero point of each axis is defined by two coordinates. In this example, the A axis rotates about X. The center line of the A axis is defined by Y and Z axis coordinates, so the A axis MRZP can be anywhere along the A axis center line. It can be here or here. The same concept is true for the B axis center line and the C axis center line. 
The TRT-100 uses an A and C axis. Once we locate the MRZP values for the A and C axes, we store these values in machine settings. The control will use these settings, along with the work offsets, to correctly machine the part. Now, we've called this video series Don't Fear 5-Axis for a reason. We hear over and over again folks don't want to invest in 5-Axis because it's hard, complicated, or confusing. One of the best things we can do to demystify this is to get familiar with the terminology. Now that we understand the A, B, and C axes, let's get familiar with some other terms like master and slave, fourth and fifth, tilt and rotary. You're gonna hear and read these terms all over the place. And I'm here to tell you, they all mean the same thing. Tilt, fourth, and master are the same thing. Slave, fifth, and rotary are the same thing. These terms come from the fact that the rotary or fifth axis is mounted on and moves with the tilt or fourth axis. That's why the rotary axis is a slave to the tilt axis. So going back to our TRT-100, our A axis can be called the master, fourth, or tilt, and our C axis can be called the slave, rotary, or fifth. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. Time to install the rotary. I'm gonna stone the table and make sure I don't have any high spots and then spray it down with some rust preventative oil and we should be ready to go. So I've got my rotary on the table and I snugged it down. I fed the cables up through the enclosure and made sure that I had a nice drape on the cables when the table was as far away as it's gonna get. Now I'm gonna shut down the power before I connect the rotary cables in the airline. Now, check out how easy we made setting up rotary files in the next generation control. On the rotary tab of the settings window, I have two boxes, current rotary selections and select new rotaries. This is a complete list of parameter files for every rotary product we make. Now, we're gonna set up a TRT-100, so I'm gonna scroll down and find those files. There I am, TRT-100 P3ROT, and TRT100 P3TLT, tilt and rotary. Now, the tilt axis is always the fourth axis, so I'm gonna set that one up first. I scroll to that file and press enter. This brings up my table orientation window where I can tell it what axis letter it is and whether it's the fourth or the fifth axis. In this case, it's set up as an A axis, it's the fourth, which is what I want, so I press enter to select that. Then I scroll to the rotary axis file Press enter to select that one, and we can see it's set up as a C axis and a fifth axis. Again, exactly what I want. So I press enter. Now I press emergency stop and F3 to activate the rotary files. The control will prompt me to reboot when it's done. And there we go. When the control reboots, all I need to do is go back to my rotary configuration page and press F4 to activate dynamic work offsets and tool center point control. This brings up a configuration window where I confirm that my configuration in the machine matches the image on the screen. It does, so I press enter to select and I'm all done. So I zero return the machine and it's obvious that the tilt axis is not flat. So I'm gonna get my indicator out, I'm gonna flatten that up and I'll show you how to reset the home position. Okay, I've got my platter indicated nice and flat right where I want it. I'm gonna jog my indicator up and out of the way and then I'm gonna go back to my rotary setup page. I make sure that the fourth axis is highlighted and I'm gonna press insert to set TC offset. I press enter to accept the prompt on the screen and it resets my tool changer offset. Now, when I zero return the axis, it's gonna return back to that flat position. With the A0 set when the platter is flat, I just have to rotate the A axis up to 90 degrees and indicate the platter parallel to the X axis. I tighten everything up and my rotary table installation is complete. Now let me show you a couple of simple solutions to common problems we incorporated in the next generation control. 
If I have a tall rotary or fixture in the machine, I'm worried about interference with the tool changer. If I have a rotary table or a fixture plate that I need to hang off the back of the machine table, I'm worried about running into the Z-axis way cover. There's now a tab on the settings page called user positions. Here, I can set positions for tool change, travel limits, and even the second home option if it's installed on the machine. I simply jog the machine to the position I want, scroll to the axis, and press F2 to set the position. When any of the tool change mid position settings have a value in them and a tool change is commanded, the machine will move to the tool change mid position first and then start the tool change sequence. Be sure to set a z-axis tool change mid position if you need the z-axis to move first in your tool change mid position sequence. The max user travel limit simply prevents the machine from traveling beyond the user defined limit. To make any of these settings inactive, simply highlight the setting and press the origin key. In order to use the dynamic work offset and tool center point control functions, we have to tell the control where the machine rotary zero point, or MRZP, is. We have a new BPS template called MRZP Probatrunion. All I have to do is select the number that matches the rotary model I've installed. Our setup here, we put a TRT100, so I select 2 and press Enter. I scroll down to verify the correct model is chosen and scroll down again for the jogging instructions. I press the letter key of the axis I want to jog and press the hand jog key. Now I jog the spindle to the bore, the center of the rotary axis, and I'm ready to run the cycle. The template knows all the dimensions of the rotary model and even if it's an AC or BC configuration. The cycle will probe the center bore of the rotary and get the X and Y coordinates for the C axis. It'll probe the platter to find its location in Z and then retract and rotate the tilt axis to 90 and minus 90 degrees to find the center of X or Y. Just like that, it's finished, and it wrote the MRZP values for settings 300 through 305 into macro variables 10,300 to 10,305. You just need to enter the values from the variables into the corresponding setting number. Now, the control knows where the MRZP is. When I set up a part, I just find the X, Y, and Z axis work offsets, as established in the CAM system, and my part will be machined correctly. So here's a quick recap. We talked about how dynamic work offsets and tool center point control make setting up a five axis job as easy as setting up a three axis job. We looked at the features page where I can find out what control options are installed on my machine and I can activate and deactivate a tryout period for options I haven't purchased yet. We talked about the different rotary axis configurations and how to use the rotary setup page when installing a rotary on the machine. We covered the user positions page where I can set up tool change offset, travel limits, and the second home position. And finally, we discussed using probing cycles to find the machine rotary zero points. Well, that's all for today's episode. Be sure to join me next time on Don't Fear 5 Axis.